Hi there, Robin here, and today I'm gonna to answer a question about how to hook up your main speakers to your subwoofer and some of the better options. So we are gonna be taking a look at the ZLX 12BT, and we're gonna be adding that to the subwoofer that we have in the studio today, which is the Alto TS315 subwoofer. Now, this could have been any other subwoofer, and you should always reference your manual because sometimes the combinations may be better with what you have, depending on how you want to hook it up. So look at these two questions. First one again from Kevin, and Kevin's got uh, two ZLXs, 12 BTs, I'm taking it, and he wants to be able to use Bluetooth between the, the speakers and be able to hook up a subwoofer to it. Normally, you just follow the instructions that ElectroVoice provided, but amazingly enough, after I reviewed the instructions on their website, and checked all the specs. They don't actually talk about hooking up more than just the second speaker to the ZLX when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity. So to add a subwoofer, let's go take a look at the speaker and see what we gotta do. So here we are looking at the back of an actual ZLX 12BT. Now, if you wanna use Bluetooth, you're gonna have to activate the Bluetooth and you're gonna turn that system on. So when you actually go in the speaker, you scroll all the way down to streaming options. So let's find it, streaming is on. So remember that's gotta be on not off and then of course you need to be in pairing mode so we are all set to go so again let's leave this on and uh, then we scroll up now the other thing that's very important is you are going to need two xlr cables to make this happen so the reason why they don't actually offer bluetooth connectivity between their first speaker and second speaker is because when you connect to your phone or tablet to this speaker there is going to be a subtle delay now if i was trying to connect microphones between two speakers that were then connected again wirelessly. So if I had Bluetooth connectivity from here to here, I would not be able to get the microphone from here to the second speaker without having a delay. And that would become a problem. So in this case, they want you to take out a cable. So the first cable is an XLR cable and we're gonna go to the output of the first speaker. So we're plugging right into the back here. And then very important is we have to go into the menu one more time and we want to go down to where it says left and right. So it says mix out mode. How do we want this output to act? If I just had two speakers hooked up, I would really like to have it in left and right mode. That would be awesome. So one speaker would be left, the other speaker would be right. But in this case, because I'm hooking up a subwoofer, I want to make sure that says left and right, L plus R. So this way I get a full signal out of here. And then we're going to go to our second speaker. So now if this is our second speaker, we're going to take our XLR cable, plug in right in to there. We're going to set that one at unity. And then we're going to now take our second XLR cable, we're gonna plug that into the output. And now this cable is the one that's gonna to go to our subwoofer. So now we're at the back of the subwoofer. This could have been any subwoofer you have. So I know that we've got an Alto TS315 sub, but this could have been an Electro Voice. It could have been a JBL. It could have been whatever you had, a Mac brand, doesn't matter. We're gonna go from our first speaker via Bluetooth, make sure that we're connected to left and right connectivity, use an XLR cable to our second speaker, then we're gonna take our output of our second speaker and come right into input number one. Now we're ready. So once you've plugged everything in, of course, now's a good time to turn it all on. Then you can actually bring up the volume. I always recommend when you're actually turning on everything, start with the very first speaker that you have connected, then the second speaker, then the subwoofer. This prevents any popping sounds or jumping when the system's powering up. And that is how you get a Bluetooth speaker connected to a second speaker, then connected to an actual subwoofer. So just before we get into Charles's actual question, which has to do which came first, the chicken or the egg, so should I hook up a subwoofer first or a subwoofer second after my main speakers, I did want to take a mention to their actual YouTube channel. Absolutely amazing. It's called Charles Paper Kite Finney, if I'm mispronouncing it, my apologies, but they're a couple and they sing and it's amazing the work they have. They have so many songs on their actual channel. So if you'd like to be entertained and you want to enjoy three minutes of your life, by all means, have a look at their actual YouTube channel. I have it up above and I'm going to be linking to that as well at the end for you. It is, if you want to be entertained, you want to enjoy some music, you just want to put a smile on your face. When you get, you have a choice. You can either watch the accents or you can watch them. So if you want to be educated there, if you want to be entertained, well, have a look at their channel. So our second question is from Charles and he wants to make sure he's getting the most out of his system. And he wants to know, is it better to hook up the subwoofer first or the subwoofer second? Now for convenience sake, and as long as the instructions follow the, the suit in this particular case, 
you would go, let's say from a mixer or a controller to your subwoofer for convenience, and then from the subwoofer up to your left and right speakers. Now, of course, if you have two subs and two tops left, you're gonna go and connect to the subwoofer, then chase it up to the top. Same thing is gonna happen on your right side. You're gonna go to the actual subwoofer and then up to the top. And take note of the features you have on your particular speaker, because some speakers do have crossovers in them. Some subwoofers have the ability to run either a full output or a crossover output on the back side of it. And if your subwoofer does have crossovers built into it, you want to take advantage of that. Of course, that means you're going to run to that sub first and then off to the tops. So again, it's all what works best for you and the features that are built onto your subs. Again, me personally, I normally go subwoofer and then up to the top, or sometimes I'll even use an aux option to go to the subwoofer separately from the top so I can actually control how much bass. Because sometimes you just don't want to go to the speaker to make all these fine tunings. You want to do it somewhere else. So if you take advantage of the aux settings on your mixer, if you're not using it for monitor purposes, you can use the aux out of your mixer to actually run your subwoofer and then control what has the sub running to it and how much sub frequency is going to go there. It also allows you to control how loud it is. So if you like more subwoofer, that low end bass, you can turn that up higher than your mains. Well, I hope that helped a little bit with hooking up your subwoofer to your tops. Uh, remember our next video, this is very exciting, is going to be about this mixer that's right in front of me. And following this, we've got a whole bunch of great videos where we're going to be talking about microphones and audio interfaces. We've got new microphones from Sterling to talk about. It's called a P30. It's going to blow your mind what you can do with that microphone. Plus, we're going to talk about some of their other microphones and why they're so good. We've got a P10 and a P20 which is absolutely fun to use. We also have a bunch of new microphones in from Marantz, which we're gonna be talking about as well over the next few weeks. So hopefully, you know, praying to the JBL gods that we may be able to get our hands on some of the new Eon 700 series. The app that runs it has been updated. The system has been increased. And when it comes to power, they've put a whole bunch of new things on that speaker. And I'm really trying to get our hands on some of those as well. So hopefully once we get through all our next video sets, we might have the actual speaker. So I hope this video helped you out in hooking up your subwoofer to your main speakers. It's always great to have a subwoofer and it's always great to get it to work really well. Our next video is going to be about the PRX 400 from Phoenix. And this is a really cool mixer that does a whole bunch of stuff. So besides just reviewing it, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of things that you can do with it, including recording on your computer, playing back, using it for karaoke, having it in a studio, maybe you're a garage band and you're looking for something that's got a lot of mic inputs. That's this mixer right here.